Hey everyone, John Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new After Effects tutorial about how to create 3D text using the Cinema 4D renderer inside of After Effects CC 2017. So here we have 3D text that's been created all inside of After Effects without having to leave After Effects using this new Cinema 4D renderer, which is new and different from the older ray trace renderer. And we can do this all right inside of After Effects if you're more comfortable with getting into 3D but still using everything you already know about After Effects. And before we get into this real quick, you might have noticed that I got some fun new theme music and that came courtesy of Rigo Asaguera. You can check him out if you wanna see if he can work on some fun YouTube theme music for you with that fun dubstep feel at facebook.com slash official or check out more of his audio on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash He did a really awesome job for my stuff and I'm really into it. So anyway, back into After Effects. Basically what we're doing is taking text and assets we can create in After Effects. If we start here, where we have our basic 3D setup with text in After Effects where we can orbit around a camera and things are three dimensional in space but not extruded. Now using the Cinema 4D renderer, which we see here, we can create 3D text, extrude it, add some basic materials all without leaving After Effects. So let's start talking about how we can set that up and get you on your way to creating some fun 3D text. So let's start here. We have as basic of an After Effects setup as you can get. We have some text, a shape layer, and a background solid. And it's all just 2D layers right now, so it matters what order the layers are in, if we wanna see different things. And our basic getting started in After Effects setup, if you aren't familiar, is clicking on this 3D layer for everything we want to be 3D. And then if we take a look from two views and check it out from the top, we could move stuff back in Z space now as well, like that shape layer and put the background behind it and even offset the text a bit. And if we look at the position of all these by pressing P, they all have X, Y, and Z, where we can move it back in 3D space in Z. Nothing too crazy. And we can make a camera with layer new camera. I'll just use 50 millimeter. And then using the C keys, we could orbit that camera around to look at this, as well as pan and dolly in 3D. Not blowing any minds here or doing anything impressive. But now in CC 2017, if we take a look at this renderer button in the top right and click that, we used to have our classic 3D renderer, which is what we're looking at now, and a ray trace renderer, which was a good attempt, but didn't really work that great and was really slow to render. Well, now we have this Cinema 4D renderer right in After Effects, which uses Cinema 4D to render under the hood. If we click that on, it's gonna tell us what we can do. And basically we can extrude objects like text and shapes, add reflections, curve footage layers, which can be really fun and it turn on environment layers, which can be a really unique and cool way to change what you're seeing looks like. We'll talk about that in this tutorial too. And if we click options, they made it really simple to work with without diving too far into 3D render settings. Basically you got this slider and if you want it to render faster, you can pull it left and it's draft. If you want it to take forever, but be super high quality, you can go to the right extreme. What I like to do while I'm working is just leave it really light on like 10 or 15 while I'm working. And then when we render, we can go up to about 51 and you'll see that's when it clicks over from geometry, anti-aliasing to best. And that's gonna make a big difference when we render, but we don't need that on while we're just working because it'll bog us down. So I'll go to okay, okay. And let's take a look at what changed on this 3D text layer. If I twirl this open, there's text transform and now there's geometry and material options. And there's a whole bunch of fun new settings that we can work with based on these being 3D layers and the Cinema 4D render. And if we go back to this renderer and just click through these, we can see what changes real quick. If we have classic 3D, we just have basic material options like accept lights and shadows on or off. Cinema 4D, we get all these awesome new additions for bevel style, extrusion depth, and some more materials. And if we take a look, the only difference with this ray trace is this light transmission. And who really knows what that even does anyway? But this one, in my opinion, isn't as good as an option anymore. And it's really just there because it's a legacy item. Now we can use the Cinema 4D renderer. Click OK. And what we can start to do, which is what's really going to make this feel three-dimensional, is on any text or shape layer, we have bevel style, bevel depth, and extrusion depth. So if we punch in here and take a look at this, 
and extrude this back in space. You can see that box is gonna push back. So we put this at like 500. Now you can see it's volumetric, but there's no lights yet. So all we see is this big chunk and we can even go to our render settings with this little wrench and take this down to one while we're just working just so we'll get a little quicker speed to see what's happening while we're making adjustments early on here. So it's just gonna be these big chunks until we have some lights because without light, there's just ambient lighting and that's not gonna really highlight our edges and extrusions as well. So let's add some lights and we'll really make this thing work. So I'm gonna go to layer new light and for this first one, I'm gonna get a spotlight. We'll put that in the front and that'll be in our key light. I'm gonna turn on cast shadows and we'll work with the shadows a little later and go to okay. And now in 3D view, I'm gonna just pull this away from our object and kind of point it at it. And now you can see we're getting somewhere. We can see the front caps of our text and that it's extruded, but we don't see the edges as much because it's hidden from the light. So we could add some more lights and talk about all these additional options with our 3D layers for shadows as well as the materials. So the big thing with working in 3D and After Effects is everything can cast and accept shadows and lights and there's on and off switches for all of those. And our light also has properties if it casts shadows or not. So on any 3D layer, if we press AA, so A twice real quickly, it'll pull up our 3D settings. So we can see cast shadows is on on the light, but right now on this text, cast shadows is off. So that object is not gonna specifically cast shadows. So we wanna turn that on. And then for our background objects, we press AA twice real quick. We can see whether or not those are casting and accepting shadows. So we could tweak those on and off if we want to do different types of things where if we want some objects to not accept shadows, some to not cast shadows, depending on what we're trying to do. So now if we move this light around a little and to bring it more towards the front, we'll see where those shadows are falling a lot more. And we can also check it out from this view and kind of move our light down as well as its point of interest. And on the light, we also could get P for position and A for point of interest and move them around manually if you prefer to work that way. So now we got some shadows. We can see that our text is 3D from our lights. We're starting to get somewhere, but let's make this look a lot more finished with some more lights, talk about our bevel so we get some nice edges and do a lot more that you can do with this new Cinema 4D render engine. So I'm gonna make another new light. And for this one, I'm just gonna use a point light I'm not gonna cast shadows because I just wanted to use it as a fill light on the side. So I'm just gonna go to okay, position that over on this left side. And now we can start to see some of our edges on our text, but it's way too bright. So we can actually just turn that down a bit because we just need it to fill in some of those edges, not blow out everything else in our scene and we'll move it away a little. And now we can start to see that's filling in our edges, but not adding conflicting extra shadows and we can even give it a little bit of color if we go to our light settings and we want this to feel a little more realistic, just a little bit of an orange tan color will make it feel a little more believable. And then we can even balance that out with a rim light in the back. So I'll just duplicate this light, move it behind our text and then put it on the top and take this opacity down even more like 25, just so we see some nice specular highlights on our edges. And we take this, main light, which we'll just rename key light down a bit. It'll kind of balance things out a bit with our other lights. And we can just rename this left one fill light and this last one rim light. And there's kind of a basic three point light setup. And there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So let's go back to one view and we can take a look at this. Now, when you're dealing with 3D text and logos, what really makes this feel a lot nicer and catch a lot more light and highlights is if we do something with our bevel style on our edges. So right now it's none, so they're just completely straight. If we take a look at this, we can make it angular, concave, or convex. So let's make it angular. If we turn this bevel depth up a bit, you can see it bevels our edges in an angular way. We could also take a look at these other settings for concave, which looks pretty cool with it indented like that, or convex, where it's a lot more rounded. I like that one, so I'm gonna stick with that. And one thing you might not use in After Effects very often that's really useful for 3D is this region of interest. If we click that, we can draw a box and it's actually only gonna render this box 
while we're working rather than the whole frame. And if we kick this down to half, we're going to get a lot quicker results when really all we're looking at is this 3D text. And we don't necessarily need to see how everything else and have that re-rendered every time. So it's a good little useful tool for 3D. Now, the other thing we can really start to work is our materials. Now, in the After Effects Cinema 4D renderer, as opposed to Cinema 4D Lite or the full version, materials are a little limited, but you can turn things up like reflection intensity, reflection roll-off, specular shininess, as well as diffuse and ambient to kind of adjust the materials between looking matte and kind of getting this metal look where we can see it now based on the reflection intensity if we turn this all the way up the text is accurately completely reflecting the environment around it so we see the blue reflection on the edges we don't see anything in the front because if we look at our top view there's nothing over here so we're just getting black reflections now one way that you can really add a 3d reflections in after effects and cinema 4d is using what's called an environment layer. And what that'll do is let you insert a photo or a 360 HDR image like what we have right here in this example. And you'll actually see that in the reflection. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna drag this neon blue one that I have into my scene. And if I scale this down and solo it, you can see it's a 360 photo of this entryway with some neon light. So there's some cool visual interests in there. And what we can do is right click on this and go to environment layer and I'll unsolo that. And now you can see, we can actually see that photo reflected in our text in addition to the actual blue background. And we can rotate it or orient it differently. And we can see it's rotating. If we wanna rotate that for different looks in our text. Now what's basically happening with this is it's taking this flat photo and mapping it around a sphere in our entire scene so that we see reflections from this photo in addition to the local reflections from these blue walls. And on our text, if we didn't want it to be that sharp, if we just want some reflections, but not to see things like that actual tree and background in there, we could turn down our reflection sharpness and now you can really start to see why that's important because it's giving us a lot of additional reflections and visual data without having to create extra solids and move them around our text. And this is kind of noisy because it's a preview, but if we go to that wrench icon and turn this up just a bit for our preview purposes right now, I'll put this back at 51, go to okay, let it re-render that frame. Look how nice that looks and it's reflecting that 360 image. And we could grab a different one of these, say I get this desert daytime one, I can grab that original 360 photo, select this new one, hold alter option to replace it. And we're gonna get a completely different look for our reflections. Now you might be wondering about now, how do I get these and where do these types of photos come from that I could use for my After Effects projects? Well, I happen to have a bunch of packs of these in my online store at motionutorials.net slash store, where you can pick up different packs of these to get all sorts of different looks. In this example, I'm using this 360 Environment Maps Pro pack called Vegas City, which is a bunch of these 360 photos I made for your After Effects and Cinema 40 projects that I took all over Las Vegas when I was out there a couple of months ago. So you got all sorts of cool stuff like this neon museum, casinos, daytime scenes, nighttime scenes, pools, streets, gift shops, all sorts of cool stuff that you can drop into your After Effects projects and use as these environment layers. And you can get these on my online store at motionutorials.net slash store for pretty cheap if you just want one pack or if you want to get a couple packs together, you can pick up the Super City pack and get two or the Ultra Bundle and get all three packs. And if you just want to test this out, I actually have a free pack that you can get if you head over to the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials, like the page and send me a message and I'll send you a free demo pack with a couple of these in it to try out in your projects. So using these environment maps can be really awesome for your After Effects 3D projects. And what's awesome about this whole system, just turn this renderer down, is that if you learn those couple things we just talked about, that's really all you got to pick up 
And beyond that, you can do everything else you already might know about in After Effects, like keyframe animation on position, rotation. You could still add a type animator so you could actually animate 3D text letter by letter and then add parameters, do all sorts of stuff, fun stuff. So anything you already knew about text and 2D or 3D layers in After Effects, you can add these couple points of extruding it, adding bevels, environment layers with 360 Environment Maps Pro, and then do everything else you already know about in After Effects without getting too complex. Now, if you want to do this with a logo, be sure to check out one of the other tutorials I'm working on of how to do the same sort of thing with the logo. And if you want to learn more about other new features like the live text templates from After Effects to Premiere Pro in 2017, in CC 2017, be sure to check that one out. And if you want to take this knowledge and apply it beyond just After Effects and get into Cinema 4D Lite, be sure to check out some of the Cinema 4D Lite tutorials I have where it's still within Adobe Creative Cloud using After Effects, you can really get into full 3D using Cinema 4D Lite and go beyond just text and 3D extruded logos and really start to learn a full 3D environment once you get these basics down in After Effects. And if you have any questions on this or you want to interact on social media, you can hit me up on Facebook at facebook.com slash motion tutorials, as well as on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. And if you want to check out some of the cool products and more tutorials, be sure to check out the full site at motiontutorials.net where I got tons of After Effects and Cinema 40 Lite tutorials. I got over 100 tutorials now, as well as some fun products and super affordable templates in the store in addition to 360 Environment Maps Pro for all sorts of stuff like movie title recreations, plug-in templates, and some really fun stuff, which some of it for just a couple bucks. Look at that one, it's only three or four dollars. So be sure to check that out. And I hope you like this new tutorial on new features for After Effects CC 2017. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Bye -bye.